Hello everyone, my name is Kelly Oyahara, and I was asked by Lauren to just kind of share a little bit with you to encourage you um, and to share with you times in my life when, you know, God showed up in a really big way and offered hope. Um, to be honest with you, I can't really think of a time when God didn't show up. Um, my life has been kind of a challenge, uh, most of it, uh, at times. I jokingly referred to myself as a Jobette, you know, everything went wrong in Job's life and uh, his friends in confidence said that he must be doing something wrong for all these things um, to kind of go south in his life. And that really weighed heavy on my heart because, you know, I was really um, a new Christian, new in my faith, trying to do everything right and um, to be told that I must be doing something wrong, there must be sin in my life was really devastating. Um, over the years, I've come to realize that, no, that's not necessarily the case. You know, that God works and allows things in our life to stretch us, to grow us, to strengthen us, to reveal his faithfulness to us. Um, and there, that has happened over and over and over and over again in my life. Um, my One of my earliest recollections would be um, when my oldest daughter was not quite two years old. I was expecting our second child, a girl. Um, at the time we lived in Hawaii and my husband and I, um, you know, had decided one day it was really hot out. We were gonna go to the beach and we we're just gonna chill, hang out as a family. The new baby was due, you know, in a few weeks. And so we went to this beach. Um, we called it Brendan's Beach, but it has a different name and it was a pretty secluded beach um, for the beaches in Hawaii. And, you know, we were walking along the beach. My husband was ahead of me. He had his fishing pole, and I was kind of trailing along behind him. And our daughter, Allison, was trailing along behind me. And as we were walking, it was like all of a sudden, it was like I just had this urge just to stop and turn around. And I did. I stopped. I turned around, and our daughter was choking on something. I had no idea what. You know, there was literally my husband, my daughter, myself, and this other couple on the beach, and they were way down the beach. And, um, you know, I could tell that something was wrong, but I had no idea what she would be choking on. She didn't have any food or anything like that. And, you know, I just turned around and I grabbed her. I screamed for my husband, you know, started pounding on her back and doing the things that I needed to do. But, you know, I was like eight months pregnant and just screaming and screaming and crying out to God. And um, the other couple that was on the beach came running down to us and by this time, my daughter had gone unconscious. There was no one, literally no one else around. And the other woman of the couple came up to us and she grabbed my daughter and she started to work on her. And I just was on my hands and knees, just clawing at the earth and just crying, crying out to God, please God, just, just save my daughter, just save my daughter. And, um, the lady that was next to me working on Allison, she, I finally heard the word, she's breathing. She'll be okay. She's breathing. And such a sense of relief and overwhelming gratefulness and gratitude um, came over me that I just, I just cried and I cried and I thanked God. Come to find out this woman was a nurse at the uh, Tripler Armory Hospital in Honolulu. I never was able to get her name. Um, I, I was never able to thank her, um, but I'm sure that, that, that God knows, you know, that, but to me, it was just the most amazing thing that on that isolated beach on that day, on that particular time, there was a nurse, there was a nurse there. God allowed things to happen. Um, and God didn't make these things happen, but I cannot believe how you know, God showed up in a real way that day that my prayers were answered. Um, and that's not the first time something like that it hap has happened in my life. I mean, and it's not was definitely not the last. Um, I, we have three daughters. Each one of our daughters has had a serious um, brush with death, and um, each and every time, you know, I've had to cry out to God and just release them to Him. Um, my oldest daughter, who's going to be sharing her own testimony, you know, th about what she had gone through, but. I do have to say this about this. If there was a point, um, she was in intensive care, and my prayer was, God, if it's your will, I had to submit my will to God's will and um, be willing to accept whatever the answer was. Um, 
clearly, you know, her, her life was spared. She's with us today in, in a miraculous way, but that's her story to share. Um, and through all these years, you know, many, many different things came and went and trials and tribulations and um, good times, great times. But in each and every situation, God has shown up. Most recently, and this is what I really want to share with you today, um, I don't know if it's post-traumatic stress from everything that has happened in my life, but I really battle with bouts of anxiety and seasonal depression. Um, I was doing great this year. This, this winter was, uh, was uh, not a bad year for me um, until March 16th. And I had, you know, felt the coming storm with the, this whole COVID crisis and, you know, trying to just uh, not get overwhelmed, to not focus on the negatives, to, to focus on, okay, what is it that I can do and, and pray and um, keep moving forward in the right direction. On March 16th, you know, I had received word that schools were going to be closing. I thought initially Friday, then Wednesday. So this was a Monday morning. I thought, okay, I've got to go into work. I've got to get things organized. I've got to get things prepared for the closure. And um, I direct an after school program. So, you know, I was getting ready and then the anxiety started to build to the point where I couldn't focus on anything. I was pacing and I was at the verge of tears. And, you know, I, even those unspoken prayers God hears, and I just very, very clearly heard God speak to my heart, be still. So I, I paused and, and God said, be still. So one of the, the tricks that people tell you to do when, you, when you're in the midst of an anxiety attack is to, to focus on something, um, you know, whether it be counting ceiling tiles or, you know, dots on a wall or something like that. Um, to be still. And so I just stood in the middle of the room for a few minutes and I was still and I breathed in and out and I allowed God's Holy Spirit to just speak to my heart to calm me down. And I was able to move forward with my day. Um, little did I know that in the 30 minutes that from leaving my house to getting to uh, where I work, the drive, everything changed, the, like the whole world upside down. Um, and I had only a matter of hours to, to prepare for not being employed for a period of time. I'm, I'm still unemployed. Um, and that, that in, in and of itself was really stressful and really anxiety producing. But I've had moments in the last couple of months that, you know, the anxiety threatens to take over again. And I have to be honest, there was a day that I was just paralyzed. I didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to pray. I didn't want to read scriptures. I just wanted to just sit and stare at the walls. And I'm like, I can't do this. So I decided um, to look up scriptures uh, relating to fear of the future because you know, there's so much uncertainty. We don't know what's happening. And God brought me to Exodus of all places, Exodus 14, 14. And this is what it says. It says, the Lord will fight for you. You only need to be still. You know, even though we're facing uncertain times and uncertain futures, you know, this was written to the Israelites as they were facing a new future, uncertainty. What's Their lives were changing rather rapidly. Um, and that's what I just want to encourage all of you is that in these times of uncertainty, to be still and to just listen for the voice of God. Listen to what he is speaking to your heart personally. Um, the words be still come to me over and over and over again throughout all of this. And... Um, it's really encouraging because that's the message that God has. Be still. Be still and know that I am God. Um, I was sharing with Pastor Mike some of the things that I was feeling. And one of the things he said to me, he said that God is active in the silence and our hope should be confide, confident, not confided, but confident in that. God is active in the silence. God is active in our lives right now. He is active in the midst of all the chaos and the confusion and the uncertainty. So I just want to encourage you all to, to not be overwhelmed, but to um, be still and know that he is God, that he is the Lord, and that he knows what the future holds. Have a wonderful and blessed day.